five weeks in a row talking about audio tools. This is week two of five. This week we're talking about EQs. What is an EQ? How do you use an EQ? And why do you use an EQ? This channel, I talk about audio, I talk about video, filmmaking, creativity, all of the above. I just love this stuff. I love talking about it. And if you subscribe to this channel, you are joining a movement, joining a family, and I wholeheartedly appreciate you. Seriously, I love interacting with each and every one of you that choose to interact and comment on these videos. It's been a freaking blast this year. Merry Christmas season yet again. Here we are week two talking about EQs. And an EQ is a frequency modulating, manipulating tool. It doesn't fit in the category of a dynamics processor. Even though you are decreasing or increasing the volume in different frequency bands, the dynamics processor is triggered by his interaction with the dynamics. And EQ is not. It's triggered by whatever you tell it to be triggered by, and it affects EQs on different bands. It affects the frequency spectrum that we can hear. So what is a frequency spectrum? So from 20 hertz on the far, far extreme low end, all the way up to 20,000 hertz is the human audible frequency range. However, I can only hear to about 17 or 18,000 hertz. Most people can only hear up to 15,000. I know, I'm special and gifted. That's why I do audio. So the EQ tool works to manipulate, modulate, cut, boost, all that kind of stuff within that range of audible hearing to enhance or change or creatively express the audio signal. So there are three main types of EQs. There are fixed EQs, graphic EQs, and then parametric EQs. We're gonna be talking today only about parametric, but a fixed EQ is gonna be like the three knobs you have on your home stereo or the stereo you grew up with, bass, middle, treble. That's a fixed EQ right there. Each of those knobs operates a certain level of frequencies, brings them up or down. A graphic EQ is gonna manipulate the exact same thing where you have a fixed bandwidth. You might see a five band or a 10 band EQ. Premiere Pro has a 30 band EQ, where basically it's just a set of faders on different bandwidths, which is on different pieces of frequency on a bell curve, where you can attenuate the signal or boost the signal by bandwidth. And those are fixed cues. And we're gonna get into cue here in just a minute, but they're a fixed cue situation. Fixed cue. So, um, we're gonna talk about parametric equalization. And the reason is, is because parametric EQ is the easiest way to manipulate frequencies and the most versatile and just by far the best to use. Now, if you're in Premiere Pro, there is a parametric EQ you can use there. If you work in Logic, there's one there. If you work in Final Cut, there's one there. If you work in Audition, there's one there. There are parametric EQs no matter what program you work in. So there are four parameters, four parameters that I want you to be aware of today as far as parametric EQing and how to use it for audio for video. Cuts, boosts, shelves, and Q. I mentioned Q already, so we'll just start with Q. What is Q? Q is a measure of the bandwidth, meaning a measure of how many frequencies are you manipulating at one time. The bigger the Q number, the more narrow the frequency band. The smaller the Q number, the more wide a frequency band. So a Q of zero, you're manipulating the entire frequency spectrum and you're basically just turning the volume up and down. A Q of 40 is gonna be manipulating a very, very small, narrow set of frequencies. And this is great if you have, for example, like a sine wave hum going off and going in a room, like you hear just a strange noise you wanna get rid of, or a cell phone goes off, you can pull it down just a little bit with a really narrow Q, make a cut, and it's gone. Which brings us into cuts and boosts. So a cut, is when you decrease the volume at the certain designated Q, and a boost is when you increase the volume at a designated Q. So are you trying to boost certain frequencies? Or are you trying to cut certain frequencies at a certain frequency at a certain Q? So are you trying to, to boost or cut at a certain level of frequencies with a certain level of width? That's all that's referring to as far as boosting a signal or attenuating signal at a certain level of Q. For example, a video that's done really well on my channel is how to make a lav mic sound better. And basically I was doing a cut at a wide Q in the low mids to pull down some of that nasty low end garbage that you hear from lav microphones. That was a wide Q and a cut, simple enough. You're getting the hang of this really quick, I believe you. This is much simpler than compression, trust me. It's pretty much intuitive. The fact that I'm making a video on this is just because I love EQ and I hope you do too. So we, we talked about cuts and boosts in your audio, but what about a shelf or a high pass filter or stuff like that? Well, a shelf is gonna be on the low end or the high end when you actually make a shelf shape and you increase a certain amount of frequencies, not at a bell curve, but at an actual like shelf where you just have this piece on your parametric EQ where you're gonna boost all frequencies above 
say 15,000 hertz for high-end clarity, or you're gonna cut all frequencies below 500 hertz just at like three decibels. That would be called a shelf. What about things like a high-pass filter or a low-pass filter? Exactly. Those are just specific cuts, either on the high end or the low end, that roll off a certain number of frequencies below the threshold that you decide. I do pretty hard cuts in, in video audio, below 100, below 80, to just roll off any of that nasty, unwanted noise that you pick up with your microphone, especially a sensitive microphone like the... Rode NTG3, sometimes that picks up just the most subtle noise you didn't even know were going on, like your refrigerator makes a rumble sound that you don't notice because you live with it, but on the microphone, it's gonna be a problem, so do a high pass filter. Set it at 80 hertz, knocks off everything below 80 hertz, and you're peachy. Peachy fam. So those are those parameters in a nutshell. And the one thing you really need to learn is the frequency spectrum itself. You need to be able to train your ear to find frequencies that are problematic so you can almost anticipate them. And then you can go in and you can make things better. At the end of the day, it's your ear that matters. It doesn't matter the tools you use. It doesn't matter any of the science. It matters what sounds good to you. So keep that in mind. And remember this one big rule with EQing. Always do subtractive EQing. Unless you like the sound and you're all done and you can give some air on top. But never ever boost your signals, in my opinion. Especially wide Q stuff, don't boost. Always start with subtractive EQing. So you got some muddiness? Well, what's your natural tendency gonna be? Well, let's boost the high end and boost the low end. No, it just helps so much with your gain staging. So that's it. Happy EQing. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Again, much of this stuff is intuitive. It's all about just training your ear as to where those frequencies are and learning to use the tools and understanding the lingo like Q. And that was really it. This video is really just about Q. Like I said before, this is week two of five of my audio tools course. Coming up next week is going to be the DSing course. So you don't want to miss that. If you've never used a DSer, you're going to want to check this out. Love DSing. So let me know your thoughts. What do you do with EQing? Have you used it before? What did I miss? What did I get wrong? Let me know in the comments. Would love to interact with you that way. Sorry we lost Ron Swanson just for a minute, but I will see you next week. <laughs>